going to take you to an exhibition of Ilana Saudi, who is exhibiting here in Paris in a white cube, but this visit is going to be a little bit different. And it's going to take in two parts. Part number one is going to talk about how to install the works of art and prepare the exhibition if you're an artist who is thinking of solo or group exhibition for yourself. And second part, we are going to look at the press release and why it's important to have a written statement to support your exhibition. Now, during my career, I've installed around 230, 235 art exhibitions. Now, I can tell you one thing, whatever you are installing a pottery, furniture, paintings, sculpture, nothing is accidental. There is a structure in how you exhibit and how you present for your audience once they enter the gallery. And so not to be overwhelming, once you have all the artworks in which you wish to place for an art exhibition, I want you to think about two things. Thing number one is, what is the key star? What is that one painting in the entire exhibition that is maybe the best, but also represents your entire exhibition? Think of this star painting that is going to be used not only on your website, on the invitation, but also that the audience has the visuals. When they say come to exhibition, they automatically have visuals. Even though we love to read, human responds to the visual faster. When you have an audience coming into the gallery, what is the artwork that are going to see the first? Because number one, you don't have visual fatigue yet. And so that first boom, that first impression is going to be like, when you're waiting for the bride, what the dress is going to be, what the kind of wow factor is. From that picture, how are you visually leading the audience in order to start discovering your other works of art? If the exhibition space is only one room, what is the artwork that is most visible from the window? And if it's only one room, how are you leading the audience eye to go from one point to another? If your exhibition space has tiny little rooms and you are not in a position where you can go kind of in a snake way, but it's little room here, little room there, you can also choose one area in which you're going to have a feature wall with your feature artwork. And this is where most of your audience are going to gather. That's the spot to also have your own photographer take loads of pictures because everybody's face will be associated with that key artwork. And that is your marketing. And here's a little tip. If you're coming into the gallery and the wall is very close, and then you have to kind of zoom by. It's better if you have a smaller format of the artwork because human eye can kind of zoom in and see it because the wall is quite close. If the wall is really far, you can really afford to have this huge painting depending on what size are you working with because then the human eye can allow this distance between the body and the work of art. However, I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just giving you suggestions because of my installations. Before I have one of you like, eh, when you say me? Stop. 230 exhibitions, okay? Thank you. Thirdly, I want you to think about how are you navigating a human body that comes and visits your exhibition? Once they moving from one wall to another, is there a story on the wall that you lead them through? Or is there a subject matter they're discovering? Is it a time period that you're jumping from 2021, 2022? What is it? Start to think about how are works of art saying hello or meeting your audience just as much as your audience meeting your work. And so I'll see you in a part two about press release and go and see the artist and give her some love and follow.